Just prior to the current economic situation, we were seeing studios take on many more financial partners, sharing the risk, if you will, on film projects. Do you think this will be a continuing trend? I think uh, taking on financial partners is only one way that uh, companies and we, uh, frankly, mitigate risk. Um, there are a lot of other ways. It's keeping your production costs down. It's keeping uh, discipline throughout all of your your businesses. It's keeping your overhead low. Ours is less than 9% of, of uh, revenue. Um, it's uh, taking partners when it's right to take a partner, um, but not always. Uh, frankly, it's picking uh, projects that you think really have uh, a specific audience that you know how to reach and, and to reach them efficiently through marketing that's very focused. Uh, so I, I think there's going to always be money out there and uh, oh, always be willing partners to, to co-invest in our movies. Uh, and television shows, but again, that's not the only way that we'll do it, and I don't think this uh, current environment will change that much. Lionsgate is described as the leading next-generation filmed entertainment studio. Can you explain what that next generation means? Not really. <laughs> not really. You know, people are always looking for uh, labels, and uh, you know, I guess in some ways that helps them to be able to identify us, and frankly, for us to be able to identify what we are and what we do differently. Uh, I think from the beginning, um, it, it was our conceit that people are watching entertainment differently. They're watching, we're slicing the audience up into uh, smaller and smaller slices, but into uh, groups that, that love their, their brands and loves, love their branded channels. They love the programming brands that they look at, and they'll, they'll want to get them wherever and whenever they can get them. They want to get them in the, the movie theaters, and they want to get them on demand. They want to get them on their mobile devices. Uh, and, and so we structured our company in order to accommodate that changing social environment and to monetize that changing environment. So we've aimed much more at branded cable networks in terms of supplying television shows. And we've looked uh, at various large niche audiences who go to see horror movies or go to see young male comedies. Um, specific, again, large niches that love their entertainment and, uh, again, like getting it over multiple platforms. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that, that we structured our company a little bit differently in terms of how we're going to operate, how we're going to produce content, how we're going to distribute that content. Um, and, you know, what we've created, I guess, at the end of the day is when people use that major, whether it's mini major or next gen major, uh, I think what we have created is we've created major studio market share. We've got an 8% a market share in our home entertainment business. We've got a 5% box office market share. We're doing between all of our various television entities, Lionsgate Television, Ish, uh, Debmar Mercury, we'll have this year about 20 television shows on the air. So, um, you know, in terms of our motion picture business, in terms of our product pipeline, in terms of our uh, worldwide uh, scalable production and distribution uh, business, uh, in terms of, you know, most of our operating divisions, we have major studio capability. But what I don't want to lose is I don't want to lose that entrepreneurial spirit, that innovative, uh, edgy quality uh, that we have both as executives, I think in terms of the content that we're producing and, and distributing as well. So I guess in that sense, some of those, some of those names, next gen major actually might be appropriate. We handle a library of more than 12,000 titles, uh, which really puts us in major studio uh, territory. We've got this uh, large, scalable distribution, uh, worldwide distribution infrastructure that handles not only our own product, but Mandate, Gold Circle, Relativity, uh, Studio Canal. Uh, we are partnered with Studio Canal and Adventure in the UK. We're partnered with Sony uh, in FearNet along with Comcast. Uh, we've just created a pay television channel together with Paramount and MGM. Uh, so, you know, we have, again, major studio partners. Looking forward, do you think the industry is going to focus on producing more feel-good popcorn movies rather than the expensive epics or art films in an effort to appeal more to consumers in these uncertain economic times? It's always hard to know what's going to work for an audience. As I've looked back historically at some other recessionary periods, it turns out horror films have always done well for some strange reason. Uh, I, I do think that our industry has got to acknowledge, again, something I said earlier, which is people are watching entertainment differently. And I think, again, we have to serve them the kind of entertainment they want. We've got to serve it to them whenever and however uh, that they want to get it and priced it in an affordable way, particularly in this uh, environment. So um, I think clearly there's always going to be the Harry Potters 
Uh, there are going to be always the big blockbuster James Bond. Uh, but I think that you've seen that s uh, smaller, you know, niche movies can be huge, profitable home runs. Look at last weekend, uh, Twilight. I mean, everybody didn't go to see Twilight. It was mostly younger girls aged, oh, 8 to 14, and maybe their mothers in some cases. But that was a huge home run. That picture will do almost $175 million just at the... Uh, American box. Look at Saw. Not everybody goes to see Saw, but it's a huge, it's the greatest horror franchise in, in history. So I think that, that all of the studios are going to figure out a way to look at these slices, as I said, these thinner slices, but actually monetize them across multiple platforms and do extremely well with them. Clearly, uh, there have been a glut of movies over the last a number of years, and that has made it harder for companies to get traction. I think what the a current economic environment certainly will do uh, is to shake out some of the weak competitors, probably leave some space open uh, during the weekends for pictures to do a little bit better. I think given our, our balance sheet, given our capital position, uh, I think that ultimately will be good for us and for the stronger players that are left in the business. Lionsgate is synonymous with entrepreneurial innovation. What advice do you have for others striving for that same type of reputation? I think my advice would be don't strive to be anything other than what you really are and what you really believe in. Don't try to take somebody else's brand. Don't try to uh, figure out somebody else's system. Um, come up with your own. Come up with your own brand. Come up with your own vision of what you can do best uh, and, and how you can satisfy the demand uh, that's changing uh, you know, in the world. Uh, for, for content, and, and that would be my best advice. If you have to tell somebody how to be entrepreneurial, then obviously they're not entrepreneurial. If you have to tell them how to be innovative, clearly they're not particularly uh, innovative. So um, I think people have to figure out their own, uh, their own brand, their own system, their own thing that they're going to do better than anybody else.